Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful. To live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silence. The stones would shout out aloud. Open our lips, O God. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Holy God, maker of all. Have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life. Have mercy on us. Let us in the silence confess our faults and admit our frailty. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Move among us, O God. Give us life. Let your people rejoice in you. Make our hearts clean within us. Renew us in mind and in spirit. Give us again the joy of your help. With your spirit of freedom, sustain us. So as we said, today we're continuing our deep dive into mm. Psalm 139. We've done verses 1 to 6 on Sunday. Um, Monday. Monday, yeah, that's what I meant, obviously. Um, then verses 7 to 12 we did on Wednesday. And so today we are on verses 13 to 18. We are. Uh, but as we have been, we're going to read it all through together. Um, just to really imprint this psalm on our hearts this week and allow it to walk and journey with us. Mm. And mm. then there'll be a test on Sunday evening to see if to anybody see if can you know recite it. By heart. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so Psalm 139, if you're using your Bibles, and we'll begin at verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the winds of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my in inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them has yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. O oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil. 
Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So today we're looking at sections 13 to 18. Um, this could possibly be people's favourite part of the psalm. Um, I don't know, let me know in the comments if this is your favourite little section. Um, just that phrase, I'm fearfully and wonderfully mm. made. It's probably mm. the most quoted section of this psalm probably. for that verse, yeah. as you say. Even if even if not your favourite, it will be probably the most mm. well known. Mm. I know whenever we've um, we've talked about Psalm 139 um, at, ch- at church or wherever else, it's usually referred to as the fearfully and wonderfully yeah. made psalm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, again, we come back to to this beautiful imagery that we're given of God's relationship with us mm. and our relationship mm. with God and, and reminded that it's not just active, that it's not just before us, but actually it's there from before the very beginning of us, yeah. that God is so outside of time and eternal, that God has that relationship with us before we've even begun to grow, mm. before the very beginning of wherever you might place that of our life, God is already utterly loving us and forming us out of nothing and I find that beautiful yeah absolutely and I think for me I like the kind of the interconnectedness it just reminds you of with creation so obviously when you read Genesis right at the start of the Bible you have the creation narrative and you hear about just how kind of active and intricate creation was um, and, and I think I quite like Psalm 139 it goes into more depth then about us ourselves and mm. reminds us that we too are connected to this um, this wider act of love in creation, actually. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I really like it. Mm. Mm. I like as well how it's kind of, how it still acknowledges so much of that mystery mm. Mm. Um, in creation. And, and I think these days... Um, there's probably less mystery. We know quite a lot about how how hu- how humans are formed and what happens in the womb, and and so perhaps we lose some sense of that. Well, yeah, the awe and the wonder of actually mm. what birth and new life is. Yeah. Um. Because we get kind of caught up in in oh well we know this happens at this stage and then this happens then and and so on until basically yeah. you've got a child and it's kind of oh well that happened. And whereas, obviously, back when this was written thousands of years ago, mm. there would be none of that. They didn't have ultrasounds. They didn't have all the... <laughs> Believe it or not, no. <laughs> and so um, that sense yeah. of mystery and, and of God mm. being at work mm. through that was probably so much more profound and something mm. that I think we've really lost when we talk about life. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think as well, you know, this sense of... Um, this is our first relationship we'll ever have is is with God that absolute mm. tie that at the beginning there was nothing but us and God mm. um because c- obviously I think there's a sense in which you know we're born and if our parents go to church we might go to church those sorts of things but actually mm. th- this this for me just speaks of um our first relationship our first encounter is always with God mm. Mm. And um, a couple of people pointing out verses 15 and 16 um, and mm. saying particularly that in your mm. book were written all the days that were formed for mm. me. And it kind of bookends what you were just saying there, doesn't it? Of God was our first relationship. Yeah. And because God knows all the days that were yeah. formed for us, it will be our last, our last. relationship mm. as well. Mm. And yeah, that, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And Carol obviously just saying as well that it expresses the, uh, the mystery of life and creation, mm. um, including in verse 16. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm. Um, I always wonder about the book bit. So obviously, as Methodists, we don't go in for the whole predestination stuff, mm-hmm. right? Um, so in your books were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them has yet existed. Um, I just wonder you you'll be able to help with your, you know. Will I? Yeah, yeah, your big words. <laughs> yeah, you, your whole theology thing. Um, you know, is it a sense of? God knows what's going to happen before we do every single day of our lives and God's kind of planned out everything and given us purpose and being every single day or yeah I think it's certainly a verse that can be taken Mm. that way of 
well, God's already predestined everything I'm going to do, so I'll do what I'm going to do. Mm. Um, but I, th- I think this is kind of the challenge, isn't it, of because God knows what's going to happen, mm. does that mean God predestined what's going to happen? Mm. So I would say that God knows where I'm going to end up in life and what things are going to happen to me. Oh, but that doesn't mean that God's <laughs> predestined them okay. to happen. It means that okay. God knows me and God knows the choices that I will make at various points. Like I don't think I'm suddenly going to get to a, a crossroads in my life and go, actually, no, I'm going to go left instead of right. And God will go, oh, nuts, I've got that completely wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think God knows God knows where what creation holds and, and where it ends up. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean the same as God predestined mm. everything. I don't know if that answer is sufficient enough for me this morning, but I'm going to say yes, because... Um, no, <laughs> Judas just asking, why does it say knitted together in my mother's womb, but then intricately woven in uh, woven in the depths of the earth? Um, and I'm not entirely sure where the psalmist has written that, but I think for me, the second emphasises our connection to creation that I was mm. talking about at the start. Um, yet yeah, just that sense where we're not just a separate entity to creation because all of creation was created by God. And so we're also part of, of this kind of tapestry of, of creation that, that involves more than just us as human beings. Mm. I know some sometimes human beings find that hard to uh, we like to, to imagine we're not, don't that, we? yeah, that everything's not all about us. <laughs> um, but actually that sense, because we've I think I've mentioned it before, that whole idea that if we were so many millimetres or whatever closer mm. to the sun or off the axes, we wouldn't be in existence. The fine-tuning argument, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that whole fine-tuning sense. And I think for me, that, that verse, Judith, often um, reminds me of that sense in which we're part of something bigger. Um, mm. It's not just about us. We're, we're part of um, the entirety of, of the earth uh, mm. as a created act of love. Yeah, and as you said before, it links it with that sense of and um, with the creation story mm. that we have in Genesis, doesn't it? Of, mm. of of where things came from initially and, and the darkness and the chaos that was there before God spoke. Yeah. And in some ways, maybe it's hinting at that as well. And, and, mm. and that sense mm. of, of new life out of out of death, out of darkness. And then, I mean, the reason it does it twice is it's something used quite often in yeah. the Psalms. So the way Hebrew poetry repeats itself and mm. offers mm. the same thing, but slightly different. Some some say that that's why we have the two creation stories at the very beginning in Genesis, yeah. because yeah. they both say something but say it in slightly different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's one of those quirks of absolutely quirks of yeah, literature. Psalmist, yeah, but as you say, offers slightly different mm-hmm. perspectives, mm-hmm. isn't it? Um, verse eighteen has stuck with me this week actually in a way that it hasn't before. I think maybe this repetition of reading it's helpful because mm. um, certain things stand out to you, but the latter part of verse eighteen. Um, I come to the end, I am still with you. Mm. Um, it's as simple as that. And it, it, again, just that reminder that our first relationship is God. Um, and then when we come right to the end, we are still with God. Mm. God has journeyed throughout this entirety of life with us. Uh, and when we come to the end, God's still there. God God never leaves. Mm. Um, it's just stuck out to me this week. I've just found that quite a beautiful yeah, I'd like Absolutely. it if Sam stopped there. It feels like a really neat and perfect yeah. ending, doesn't it? Because yeah. as, as I was reading through it then, I had to remind myself to keep going mm. because it kind of got to that point and it was like, oh, that's all tied up nicely. I've come to the end. Wait, there's more. Yeah. Um, and then quickly <laughs> press the next button yeah. to carry on. But yeah, it's 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 that completeness. And Ali says about, um, I think we confuse ourselves mm. by believing time for God is linear. And this comes back to that thing that we've said so many times about human beings putting their own interpretations yeah, on. That feels God. a bit Doctor Who, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all a bit timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly stuff. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, that, it, it, it's exactly that, of, of recognising that time for God is different, that God is, is outside of time. Mm-hmm. And we're reminded, aren't we, again in verse 17, I think it's said it in every section so far, about how much bigger and greater yeah. God is than us, how weighty to me are your thoughts, the kind of things that we couldn't even begin to hold up Mm. um and yet god is there with all of them and with all of us and as you say it's that perfect hemming in to use the phrase from Mm. the previous one Mm. of how god is there surrounding us and upholding us in all things it's more beautiful reassurance about who god is so if i was all of you i probably um i wouldn't bother turning up on sunday (laughs) morning prayer I, i think just if we end the psalm there 
Um, it's quite beautiful. It's quite lovely. So, so don't come on Sunday. Don't don't let us ruin it for you. <laughs> what a cop out. In other words, you're hoping that we'll go if live. Nobody will be there, and we we'll go. Oh well, we'll, we'll cancel it. it then. Yeah. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, brilliant. So uh, let's move into a time of prayer together. Um, this psalm's been great to pray with this week. Mm. Um, so as Jez leads us to begin with in prayer, um, I've got the prayer list in front of you. Names you'd like to see on there in the comments. I'll check if they're on there already from Monday and Wednesday. Um, otherwise, I'll add them on if they're not. Um, also, you've been quite quiet in the comments during prayer this week. Mm. Um, if you would like to write a sentence or two of prayer that's on your heart this morning, um, that would be wonderful. Even if actually you just want to thank God for someone in your life mm. who is fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Even if you want to thank God that you are fearfully and wonderfully Absolutely. made. Absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. So, so let's pray together. God of love and grace and power. We thank you that you are with each one of us today. That no matter where we may be gathered, no matter where we might be watching from, we are united together by your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that you call each one of us into perfect relationship with you. That you stand with open arms waiting for us to seek your embrace. Lord, thank you that you are our first and our last relationships. That there is nothing we can do that would ever take us away from you. Lord, help us all to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made that we reflect the image of God. That you created us. You have a purpose for us. And that we are utterly loved. No matter where we might find ourselves, or what the future may bring. Yes, and, and God, we just thank you this morning for the beauty that we see in creation. We thank you that each of us are just, although we are just one person, we are part of this wider story of creation, of love poured out. We thank you for the gift of each other, fearfully and wonderfully made to journey alongside, to support, to show compassion and grace to each other. But God, we come as a repentant people, as those with sorry hearts for the ways we have misused and abused your creation, for the way we've taken advantage with our own selfishness and greed. God, as we all read the climate report released this week, we pray that we will feel that sense of being sorry. We pray that it will shake us to our cause and stir us into action, that it will motivate us to do better, to care more, to do our part in changing this story of climate change. We pray for world leaders, for those in leadership in every country in this world, that we will take seriously the threat of climate change, that they too will be stirred into action, that they will move in a way that is momentous, that is inspirational, that leads the way in changing this narrative. And this morning, Lord, as we come before you in prayer, we come with hearts that have been stirred. We pray for the people of Plymouth, especially for the family and friends 
of those people who have been shot. We pray for the community in Plymouth as they come to terms with what has happened, as they're shaken by the police and media presence in their community. And we pray, Lord, for elsewhere in this world where there are outpourings of violence, of aggression, of hate. Praying especially this morning for the people of Afghanistan. We thank you, God, for the self-sacrifice of those people who are willing to go out and help, to try to change and to do their bit to serve people in absolute turmoil. We pray for the safety and protection of troops who have gone there to try and help. And we pray for the people in those communities who will lose their homes, their friends, their family to this violence again. And Lord, in this week of exam results, we pray for all of those who have been under that time of stress. For all of those who have had to wonder what the future may hold based on letters and numbers on a piece of paper. Lord, we thank you for all of those for whom this week has been good news. Who can see what the future holds and see where they might be heading. But we pray too for those for whom this has not been a time of relief and joy. But a time of disappointment and sadness. And of uncertainty. Lord, as we've talked today about that beautiful assurance that you love us completely and that we are made in your image. May all of those who are uncertain about what their futures may hold, who might not have got the results they wanted, know themselves loved completely by you. Lord, we pray this too for all people continuing to struggle, for those who are suffering due to illness, whether physical, spiritual, mental or emotional. Lord, thank you that your love is complete and that you are at work. And Lord, we lift before you all those who are on our hearts and minds this morning. All those whom we want to bring before you in prayer and trust in your faithfulness. We pray for Babs. For Becky. For Kathleen. For Linda and Rob. For Clive and Sue. For Anne. For Jean. For Ian, for Penny, for Marty, for Josie, for Jackie and her family, for Paul, for Alan, for Mari, for Louise. For Jill, for Wendy and her family, for Hilary and her family, for Kevin and his family and friends, for Peter and Angela, for Matt, for Roz, for Joshua. For Paul and Neil, for Kim, for Ollie, for Christopher and Jacob, for Jordan and family, 
for Diane and for Ravi. Lord, thank you that you are already at work. Thank you that your spirit is already present. We pray your blessing upon all of these people and on ourselves. And we pray these things in the name of Christ. Amen. With the whole church. We affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere. We affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, <clears throat> planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation. We celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. O Christ, the Master Carpenter, who at the last through wood and nails purchased our whole salvation, wield well your tools in the workshop of your world, so that we who come rough-hewn to your bench may here be fashioned to a truer beauty of your hand. We ask it for your own name's sake. Amen. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God. Offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace and love to serve. We will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love. God in community, holy and one. Amen. Amen.